Hi everyone and welcome to my recent game collection video from March and April a little bit later than I hoped to make this video because there was such, such a huge amount of game releases in March that I was having a little bit of trouble finding time to play all of them but anyway let's get started with Dead or Alive 6 which I got as a collector's edition and like always links to unboxing videos of all these limited editions in the description but anyway the game itself um, I haven't played huge amount of Dead or Alive series but I decided to give this one a try and so far I've been really liking it um, mm, I do like the triangle system of strikes, holds and throws even though at first I felt like mm, that feels a little bit too much of a rock, paper, scissors but after getting used to it I really like the system um, and what I especially like in this game is that they give you all the frame data of all the moves in the practice system, practice mode I really hope that more fighting games will do that I feel like seeing the frame data of the moves really help learning which moves you should use for each character I find that very helpful so yeah, I like it and next Dead or Alive 5 <laughs> I really like how the Capcom mm, describes the game as stylish <laughs> action and I feel like that mm, Mm, that describes the game really well if there's one word to mm, explain the game it's definitely stylish all the cutscenes and the combat and pretty much everything in the game just feels really nice and have a nice style to it quite funny <laughs> reversible cover have the same picture but from the opposite side <laughs> quite funny but yeah I feel, mm, I really enjoy the game um, the combat feels really nice and mm, maybe if there's one mm, very minor complaint maybe they should have given an option for one more one more higher difficulty level at the when you start the game because the mm, highest of the difficulty levels that are available at the beginning of the game mm, if you have played a lot of similar games that might feel a little bit too easy so <laughs> you pretty much have to play once through the game on maybe just a little bit too easy difficulty so you can finally unlock the mm, real <laughs> difficulty levels but anyway I really like the game the combat feels really nice and yeah really nice action game and next 13 sentinels I guess Rim, which I got the, and actually prologue version of the game and this I got as a music and art clips um, so it's the mm, upcoming game from Funny Lover but this is just the prologue version of the game pretty much just introduces the characters all the <laughs> 13 playable characters in the game um, so it's from Pony Lover and it shares the same really nice art style but the gameplay wise it's quite different from mm, previous games um, instead of being this kind of mm, 2D action game it's simply a, I would say just a visual novel in the prologue um, there's 
um, very little amount of space where you can move around and um, some items you can pick up and show them to um, characters to progress the story but um, so maybe that kind of adventure gameplay gets more complicated in the final game but based on based on the prologue it's it is simply the um, story driven and there's pretty much <laughs> nothing else but the um, dialogue but at least i enjoy it i like the characters and the story seems interesting and i already found a couple um, favorite characters that i can't wait to see how the story goes for them. So yeah, even though it's really different from what we <laughs> used to see from Vanilla Ver, I can't wait for the final game. And next, Lover, a dating thing. And um, I haven't played huge amount of dating sims that I think of. And I wasn't hugely interested in this one either. I usually, if I want similar type of experience, I prefer maybe some sort of mm, visual novel with romance themes or something. But um, then someone <laughs> pointed out that mm, Isikawa Yui is in this game, and because my favorite voice actor is voicing one of the characters, I decided I have to give this a try and play at least that character's story. And actually ended up <laughs> enjoying this game quite a lot. Mm. Um, gameplay wise, you simply mm, mm, spend time in school speaking to the characters and um, as you spend time with them you play this little mini game and through that unlock more story scenes and more dialogue with them. And after you complete the story mode, there's also this um, more free mode where you can simply spend time with the, your chosen character without much of a story. That part of the game I didn't find as interesting as the usual story mode. But yeah. Um, because I haven't played a huge amount of dating sims, I can't say how this compares to the others, but at least I find this interesting and I like it. Um, maybe I should see how is the story for other characters as well at some point. And next, played Argus Rebellion from Shining. Which I got as a premium fan box. So it's, I think, a third iteration of the fighting game spin off in the Shining series. And to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the fighting game. This fighting game, um, it's the previous iteration. Um, but I do like the character designs and I do like the Shining series, so I decided to give get this anyway, mainly for the mm, goodies in the premium fun box. But yeah, and what there is new in this rebellion rebellion version of the game is mainly just the characters from Signing Resonance, I believe. But yeah, I like the character designs, but I'm not a huge fan of the gameplay in this fighting game. I do prefer the mm, Shining series, the main series, over the <laughs> fighting games spin-off. And next, Atelier Lulua, Alchemist of Ireland for which I got as a premium box as well. So it's the fourth entry in the Ireland series of the Atelier mm, franchise. 
Mm. And the main character is Lulua, who is mm, daughter of Rorona, who was the main character of the first Arland game. Um, Gameplay-wise, the game progression feels maybe closer to the mm, games after the Arland series, for example. Um, at least so far there hasn't been any like mm, time limits on the mm, main story progression and such. So it's mm, to some extent I find more relaxing when there's no mm, feel of a hurried progress the game. And at least for me personally the main attraction of the game was simply to go back to the Arland and see all the <laughs> characters from the previous games, especially Rorola. But yeah, at least I like it. The usual Atelier games. Not anything hugely exciting new, but at least I find it really fun game anyway. And next, Dead or Alive Extreme 3 Scarlet. Which I also got as a collector's edition. So huge boxes for limited editions lately. Can't fit them on the camera. But anyway, so it's a second iteration of the Dead or Alive Extreme 3. Um, and pretty much only new thing is the two new characters. Which was somewhat disappointing. I would have preferred a little bit more new content like outfits and such. Maybe there's some new outfits on the um, DLC side, but I really don't like the how they um, give the DLC outfits as time timed events. I I really don't like the system, and also I don't like the way how you unlock the. Mm, outfits and such in the game. It, it makes the game feel way too grindy and mm, you have to pretty much save save scum first the money at the casino and then save scum mm, giving the items for the characters because there's a chance they don't accept the gift and such. Mm, so at the first uh, unlocking things in the game I really don't like that but after you have <laughs> unlocked a bunch of mm, outfits that you like for the character that you like mm, and start simply playing the game without <laughs> worrying about unlocking anything. At that point I really like the game, I find it quite relaxing. And from the mini games, especially the most complicated one is the mm, beach ball. I, I find it quite fun after getting used to it. At first it <laughs> feels a little bit clunky because there's quite strict timing to all the actions in the mini game, but the game doesn't tell you if you are hitting too early or too late. You just simply have to mm, try and find out what is the perfect timing, but as soon as you <laughs> learn the timings it gets quite fun, at least for me. So yeah. There are some <laughs> negative parts about the game, but overall I do enjoy it. And next to the last March release that I've got, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. <laughs> Probably everyone knows what the game is, so I suppose I just tell you my opinion on it. I do like it a lot. So far it's definitely my favorite game this year. I'm a huge <laughs> fan of From Software games. Um, if I compare it to Dark Souls and Bloodborne, mm, the combat feels really nice and the setting is really interesting at least for me. Um, but I feel like because the combat is so focused on one way to one kind of mm, gameplay. I feel like there's maybe little less replay value to it. 
especially compared to Dark Souls where you have so many different options for your combat. In here you pretty much are stuck to the one type of mm, gameplay, the combat. But at least I like the party system, I really mm, like how you can mm, beat the bosses without actually hitting them, but <laughs> only doing the posture damage through parries, I really like the system. And yeah, the setting and the story are also really nice. And I find it really interesting that they mm, chose to mm, make the story more, mm, how should I say, more obvious, obvious, because the story is pretty much told you throughout the dialogue much more than mm, in, for example, in Dark Souls where the story is hidden in the item, item descriptions and such. So yeah, quite different style of game mm, in some places compared to Dark Souls and Bloodborne, but still I really like it. It's, it is a really fun game. And next to the only April release that I've got so far, um, Murder Detective Jack the Ripper. And it's a visual novel from Nipponichi Software. And as you might be able to guess from the title, Jack the Ripper, it actually takes place in London, which I find quite unique setting for visual novels. I can't think of many visual novels that take place in that time era of time era in London. And the kind of, mm, should I say, gimmick in the mm, story is that you make choices and depending on choices you end up mm, going the either detective route or the murder murderer route route. Um, and even though I find both sides of the story interesting, um, I feel like maybe <laughs> the choices are a mm, little bit too black and white and there's no much of grey area between, at least so far. I'm not mm, very far into the story. Maybe <laughs> the story gets more complicated later on. For example, without going too much into spoilers, very first choice that you make is that you, at the very beginning of the game, you see girl in danger and you need to decide if the Arthur, the main character of the game, is going to protect the girl or, girl or simply ignore the situation and watch from the side. So, Mm, the choices are quite obvious, good and evil, so, yeah. But still, I find the story quite interesting and mm, the setting for the game feels quite unique <laughs> for visual novel. So yeah, at least I like it so far. And that's <laughs> everything from March, March and April so far quite a huge amount of game releases in March and only one from April and also the May seems to be quite quiet but anyway I guess that's everything for now so thanks for watching and bye